Seven and a half minutes now to 11. This is the Friday Rock Show here on BBC Radio 1. We have now two members of KISS, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. Gentlemen. Hello, everybody. Hello, Welcome. everybody. How are you? It's so nice to be here, mate. It's a bit of all right. You know what I mean? It's good to be here. <laughs> we would uh, we we were wondering why you were sitting here doing these interviews without yeah, any pants on. on. Why well, is that? Because it's it's cooler. That's oh, how right. you stay cool. Well, that's that's how you stay cool. That's that's great Cockney accent time. Well, thanks Rock. a lot, mate. I mean, where did you do you learn it from? That film? What was that? The great send up film. The, the name escapes me. No, you know, we learned it by listening to a hard day's night and help. You know, and you Beatles know, picking up little Beatles. Yeah. Beatles. This is George Harrison of the Beatles. <laughs> I love this. Beatles. Talking like that. Talking like that. Blowing my nose. You 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 were born in Israel. Yes, I was. I didn't know that until I read that the other day. I thought yes. you were a thoroughbred American. No. Well, we all try to be, I suppose. But uh, well, what do you mean we all try to be? No, I was born in Israel, popped out of there, and came to the United States when I was about nine years of age, mm -hmm. and have been decad. When something is decadent, and then it's been eyesed, combine those two words. What happens? <laughs> decadent eyes. Thank you. <laughs> Many times. Your dentures are in much better than mine. But so that's what happened ever since then. How did you meet Paul Stanley? We uh, were running around the streets of New York. Go on. You can you can barge in. Go on. Okay. I saw Jean walking down. I saw this um, hermaphrodite walking down the street. <laughs> yeah. You know, this, um, I couldn't make sure, I couldn't quite make out if it was a... A, a man or a woman. A man or a woman. But I sure wanted to get close to it. Yeah, him. And I saw this tongue hanging out of the mouth and... Which is incidentally available for bar mitzvahs, weddings... 398 a lick. Actually, we met, um, we met at a, a friend's house. Uh -huh. And, um. And boy, was she good. And the rest is history. You know, we, we just kind of got together and, uh, took it from there. How was the, the marquee the other night? You did the first night of right. the new marquee in That's London. Right. We figured that, um, that it needed a little bit of dirt. And we figured we would help put a little bit of dirt into the cracks in the floor. It was really a lot of fun. Actually, just before we came over to, uh, the UK from the States, we did a, a couple of clubs in New York. Mm -hmm. And it was just a nice feeling of going into a, a club and getting a chance to play for a much smaller audience. Well, never... well, I was there and I watched you and I thought for the first two or three numbers, you were a little bit unsure of yourself because oh. you were so close. Well, to we, the... we were banging into each other all it the really time. Wasn't, exactly. It really wasn't even that we were unsure of ourselves as much as we didn't even get to do a sound check there. Right. So literally what it came down to was um, walking out on the stage in front of a crowd, plugging in the guitars and hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. And pretty much for most of the night we couldn't hear anything so there were times when a song had ended and i was still in the third verse you know it must have been quite amazing also song. because um, your stage show for years and years and years and years has been the ultimate really in spectacle we've always contended though that above and beyond all that that uh, kisses a group of guys who write songs because no matter what anybody ever talks about in terms of flash pods and and tongues and various other appendages of the body that keep flicking in and out uh, above and beyond all that, there are songs. People, yeah. 70 million fans or however many there are out there that bought our records can never do anything more than just buy the records. And I mean, even though KISS scientists have been hard at work at putting flash pods into the records, it hasn't been done. It's always just been songs. Right. And that's always been our contention. And that's why we did a couple of gigs. Just sometimes it's even stronger. It. You know, sometimes you make more of a point by doing less. You know, sometimes people might have come to shows and said, well, you know, it's just a lot of fireworks and a lot of smoke. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that when you take away the fireworks and smoke, there's still a lot of fireworks and smoke, and it has nothing to do with pyro. Yeah. You know, it just has to do with music. Ultimately, you're going to stand or fall on the songs. And after 23 albums, you figure you've got a pretty good chance of standing. Am I not right in saying I think the, th the 23rd album is going to be a compilation? Yeah, it's actually, uh, it should be out October 17th. It's called Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits. Another and subtle title from yeah, Kiss. Yeah, a little, little, little bit of play on words. And uh, there's probably about 12 tunes that have been remixed. Yeah. Old tunes, um, going back to Love Gun. Cold Gin. First record. Uh, first record, going back to Cold Gin and Firehouse, stuff like that. Uh -huh. Two new tracks that, um, one's called... Um, that Paul Le Stanley Le produced I and wrote. get to that. Yeah, I uh, produced and wrote them. You're Conceived. a great double act, you guys. Oh, we're, we're comedy all the way. The Mutt and Jeff of Rock. The... Uh, One's called Let's Put the X in Sex, and the other one's called You Make Me Rock Hard. And these are the ballads, Both folks. Are, and yes. I wonder what they're all about. Very sentimental. Let's work out what this is all about. Yes, on stage, just before Iron Maiden tomorrow at the Monsters of Rock Festival at Castle Donington. That's their current single, Turn on the Night Kisser in the studio. But also in the studio still we have Kai Hansen and Ingo Swichtenberg of Halloween. We also have some people on the telephone as well who've got some questions for Halloween.
Now, questions for Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley from KISS being taken now. Well, the album that came out back in 1983, the album called Lick It Up, Kiss, and all hell is breaking loose. In our studio now, we have Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons from Kiss. Of course, they're on the bill at the Monsters of Rock Festival tomorrow at Castle Donington. It's going to be a magic monster occasion. Gentlemen, what's the biggest hell-raising thing you've ever done? Because you both have got the most... I was going to say impeccable reputations. Absolutely, we're angels. Which, of course, would be a complete lie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're known as the biggest, or we used to be maybe known as the biggest hell raisers in the business. I mean, how many tele televisions have you thrown out of hotel windows? We don't throw televisions out the window. We don't have time to do that. You don't. We're usually strapped to a bed. <laughs> Psychi uh, psychiatric. That's right. We're usually in for some very heavy duty therapy. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Should we stop uh, talking about that heavy-duty therapy? Because I read a great article about it the other day that uh, you did, Mr. Simmons, and it seems that you really do get it on. You have to practice what you preach. I mean, you can't just talk dirty. I think you've either got to deliver the goods or shut up. In my case, I can't keep my mouth shut. Or your tongue in it. Or my tongue in it. Anyway, there are too many uh, too many requests. There are. <laughs> what can one what can one do you're a man that's now going into a, another phase of your life you're starting a record company yep simmons record yes i was going to call it uh, stanley records but something prevailed at the last second and the uh, first group that's going to come out is a group called house of lords coming out in september yeah and bmg is distributing it worldwide so i'm obviously very honored are you going to have total control over it yourself totally uh, total autonomy which is a big word like gymnasium which means, in essence, I get to do what I like, and uh, they're giving me, in essence, enough rope mm. to either hang myself or create, you know, utopia, the best of all possible worlds for a group, a guy running the label who maybe does understand how to write a song and get up on stage instead of a guy who sits in back of a desk and shuffles paper. Does this mean to say that you go out and try and find acts, you know, usually, at local clubs when you're playing around? Uh, sure. We, all of us, usually get out and see as many of the local bands as we can whenever time permits. Mm -hmm. So, certainly that's one of the ways. The other way is uh, a lot of the tapes come in through the post. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you funny, know. I never say the post. I always say it through the mail, but I'm trying to be English. <laughs> you lost your action there for a minute. Uh, well, you know, it's not so difficult to talk like that, but... So, I mean, is this an open invitation to anybody who's listening now to send in tapes to you? All bands, anybody that's got something interesting. What I'm not really interested in is copies of Kiss or copies of Maiden or copies of anybody. If you've got something unique, uh -huh. if you think you've got your own perspective, I sure don't want to hear a tape and have somebody say, Hey, that sounds just like uh, so-and-so. That's not as interesting to me as a band okay. that figures out for themselves what it is that they are. All right. If people send us tapes, I'll send them on to BMG, and they'll send them on to you in wherever, Los Easy Angeles, New York, or wherever. Easily done. Paul Stanley, what's the extension of your career, then? Oh, the extension of my career is, um, actually, at the moment, there's two bands that I'm managing. Uh, one of them I'm producing, and they should have deals in the next two weeks. Actually, the news I got today is that I think I have a record label. That sounds familiar. And... Um, other than that, I was asked to produce a couple of tracks on Cher's album when mm -hmm. I get back to to the States after our tour. We keep it in the family. And um, other than that, just producing, Gene was telling you before, the two new Kiss tracks, mm -hmm. which is nice because uh, I guess the last time I worked on something was Animalized, and that did quite well. That was a million four in America. So basically it's that and listening to tapes, as does Gene. It's very, it's a very interesting situation when you have two people receiving tapes through the mail at the same office. So... Um, you can either send them, probably the best way to send them is if you want to send them directly, you can send them to the KISS company and put my name on it. And that's 1414 6th Avenue, New York, 10017. 19. It's actually 19. But so we'd get there if it was 17. <laughs> there's, the, there's, the, there's the partnership breaking there up immediately <laughs> over the postcode. And if you put my name on it, of course, I'll listen to it. Okay. Um, Open invitation for everybody to get their tapes in as fast as possible. We've got some calls for Kiss. This is from Justin Brown from Bishop Stortford. Justin, how are you? Hello, I'm all right, thanks. Who do you want to talk to then? Kiss, please. Hello, Justin. Hello, how are you? All right. Good. Uh, why did you choose the name Kiss? Well, because, you know, when we needed a name, every band needs a name. It's like, um, I guess, a, a source of identity. And um, I thought we needed a name that would be something that sounded familiar and that was something that you had heard before. Plus, Kiss is great because it's heavy. It can be like a kiss of death. It can be sexual, like a kiss that leads to something else. So it just seemed like the right name. And it looked really great when it was hanging 20 feet high behind the stage. And also, Metallica's taken, so... uh <laughs> Nothing we can do about that. <laughs> okay, Justin, thank you very much. Here's a call from County Antrim in Northern Ireland from Adrian McClarty. Adrian, hello. Hello. 
Your question for Kiss. Uh, is it true about Kiss coming to Belfast? Yes. Yes, we're, we're not supposed to announce that, but yes, it's true. We are, we're definitely coming to Belfast on the tour that has not been announced, that we're not really doing, but on the tour that we're not doing, we are going to Belfast, which is going to be wonderful because we've never been there before. That's great. Yeah, Good we're really you. looking forward to it. That'll be an occasion over there, Adrian, won't it? there. Good. Just we'll a minute. Can I just ask one more question? Sure, go ahead. I say hello to uh, Malcolm and Trevor, my friends over here. Hello, Malcolm and Trevor. And I've got a small band called Chemical on the road. All right. Good. That sounds great. Maybe we'll, we'll see you in Belfast. We wish on. you the best. Hope so. Ta. Adrian, Bye. thank you very much indeed. We Bye. have another gentleman here with an Irish name. It's Liam Cyril from Nottingham, though. Liam, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Your question for Kiss. Well, uh, I'd like to ask Kiss about the memorabilia and stuff. Things like that. You know, recently we've seen Elton John getting rid of a load of his old stuff. I just wondered if Kiss had got a load of stuff back away. Funny you like should ask. Costumes and boots and things. Yeah, funny you should ask. We actually have... What what is probably a warehouse of probably fifteen thousand square feet of nothing but all the original costumes, all the original boots, guitars. We actually have the complete Creatures of the Night stage in storage. So all that stuff is in storage, and we are beginning to look at each other and wonder what we're going to do with it. And your guess is as good as ours, but I think the conclusion may be the same. Yeah, what? Well, tell it all off. Either that or give it to Megadeth. The Either guys that. are right outside of the door. Or give it to Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> give it to Liam. <laughs> give, it, give it, yeah, indeed. Give it to Liam Cyril of Nottingham, right? You got a big enough, enough house to take it, have you, Liam? Um, well, I, I just think about expanding it. Okay. You going to the gig tomorrow? No, I can't, I can't go, you see. Yeah. All right, in that case, we're not going either. Forget it. <laughs> okay, Liam's not going. Liam, if you can't go, then that's it. That's it. Monsters of Brock. They pulled off that's the bill. Right. Liam, thank you very much indeed for your call. Okay. Still to come on the Friday Rock Show, we'll be talking to Dave and also Jeff of Megadeth. Yay. Uh, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons here. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Pleasure. We'll what see about you just one final question, Mr. Simmons? Your appearance on screen. Yes, what about that? You're back in the hotel room or the... Uh, <laughs> no, not that one. Not that screen. There's a film coming out, another movie with you up there. Gee, I don't know about that one. I know that there's a... That, that was made at the hotel like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Blackmail. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, there was some talk a while back of me doing the James Bond film, but after having met... The, this is no joke. You know, he's starting to smile as if I'm about to give him a one-liner. No joke. We I uh, couldn't do that film because we started to come out on tour. Right. But maybe that's the film you're referring to. The other stuff is secret. I'm not allowed to talk about okay. it. Okay, you're not allowed to talk that like uh, the same way that Paul spoke about the tour. That isn't going to happen. Isn't that gonna happen. Right. That's right. You're catching on. Could you possibly give us a clue when the tour might not happen? The tour might not happen in uh, the UK starting, uh, I guess, the third week in September. That's when it might not happen. It might not happen then. Okay. We're well, looking forward to possibly not seeing you then. <laughs> We're possibly not going to see you for two nights at uh, Wembley or two nights at NEC or uh, other places such as that. But that's where. But it would have uh, would have been fun. It would wouldn't? be fun if we could. But do I that. possibly will not be there. Okay. Wonderful. And nor will anybody else, of course. Wonderful, gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. That's Kiss, Hell I High Water. The address of the Kiss Company, once again, if you want to send your tapes direct to those gentlemen, is 1414 6th Avenue, New York City. And the zip code, or the postcode as we call it, is 10019. The Kiss Company, 1414 6th Avenue, New York City, 10019. That, of course, is in the United States of America. Or it was the last time we looked. It's 19 minutes past 11. This is the Friday Rock Show. Coming to you tonight from BBC Radio Nottingham. Previewing the action that's going to be a Occurring on stage at the Monsters of Rock Festival tomorrow. Still to come on the program, in fact, sitting down at the moment and getting themselves together, Dave and Jeff from Megadeth, who made this great track. <laughs>